everyone, Chaps here. Today I want to show you a fairly simple project that I think adds a nice touch to some bathrooms. If you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen the bathroom renovation pictures from the past couple of years. Basically, I replaced the toilet, redid the floor, painted, and did a whole overhaul of the vanity. Like, I ripped it apart, rebuilt the frame, installed a new top, converted to a double sink, and hooked up all the new plumbing. It was a great project that made the bathroom look much nicer. That said, there was one main issue remaining. The mirror and the vanity didn't line up well. Either the mirror or the back of the vanity top, I'm guessing it was the mirror, is bowed a little bit. It creates this annoying gap back here. The easiest way to hide this is actually something that I had been considering doing anyways, and that's adding a frame around the mirror. The frame will add some color and update the style of the bathroom, and if it's thick enough, it can cover the gap that formed. This is a wall-to-wall -wall mirror about 92 inches long, so just shy of 8 feet. It's also slightly under 4 feet tall. Therefore, if I get three 8-foot boards and cut one of them in half, I'll have enough wood for the frame. By far, the easiest method would have been to do a shaker-style frame. It's all straight 90-degree cuts, and it would go in pretty simply. My wife was leaning towards a different aesthetic, though. We ended up deciding on some casing, like the molding that you'd see around a door or a window. I headed to Menards and found some primed poplar casing. I opted for some that was 5 8 inch thick by 2 and a quarter wide. Unfortunately, I had to get 10 foot lengths because that's all they sold, as opposed to the 8 foot lengths that I was hoping to buy, but it actually worked out well as it gave me some additional scrap to test things out with. So, easy enough, we just cut these to length at 45s and attach it, right? Well, not quite. First of all, I can't screw or nail into the top or bottom as the mirror's in the way. That means I need to attach it all together and then attach it to the side walls. If this wasn't a wall to wall mirror, it would have been much easier as then I could just overhang it a bit more and attach it straight on. The other issue which I hadn't anticipated was this little clip that holds the mirror in place. It makes it so that the frame can't lie flat against the mirror. The easiest solution here is simply to remove some material to make way for the clip. This can be done with a table saw, but lucky for me, I picked up a second-hand router table about a year ago. I had never used it, or really any router table before this, but this seemed like a nice chance to test it out. I set the depth and the width I was interested in, and trimmed out a little slot. This was a great time to use one of my pieces of scrap board, so I could route that out, see what size it was, then bring it upstairs and test out the sizing, and adjust as necessary. Once I had it set right, I could do the main boards. I'll note that I did this in two passes, so that I wasn't taking off too much at once. With everything routed and cut to length, I brought it upstairs to fit it. Due to the way the boards wedge in and meet at the 45 degree angle, it was a hair too big, so I trimmed off a bit of length. In hindsight, it probably didn't need to be as perfect of a fit as what I was going for anyways. So now the board's at the right length, and it's time to attach them together. I didn't have enough space to clamp it all together the way I wanted, so I opted for a two-stage method. I essentially made two L's, and then I attached those L's together to form the full frame. For each corner, I added some glue, got it placed right, and popped a brad nail in there to hold it in place. Then I pressed it a bit to make sure it's aligned perfectly and clamped each side in place. One of my glue joints actually ended up pulling out due to it being such a small surface area. I also wasn't really thinking properly when I added the brad nails, and I just put in the one per corner. Really, I should have put in two on each corner, one from each side. I went back and added those, and now it holds together much better. I don't know if this part was necessary, or if it really does anything, but I also tried to add some support to the back. It's just glue, sawdust, and some thin cardboard L's. Again, not sure how much that helped, but it made me feel a little bit better about it. With the frame fully assembled, we brought it back upstairs to do one last fit check. When doing this fit, we noticed a slight bow in some of the wood, particularly the long top and bottom portions. Unfortunately, this isn't something that can be easily fixed when we screw it into the wall, as there's no screws that go on the top or the bottom section. What we ended up doing was actually wetting and clamping the boards to induce a bow in the opposite direction. That is, we wanted it to bow into the mirror. When installed, it won't be able to bow that direction, so it's really just forcing the frame to stay pressed against the mirror. So yeah, we just clamped it for a few days in order to let it bow in the direction we wanted. But now for the fun part, prepping and painting. For only about $1 extra per board, we got pre-primed boards, which in theory reduced the number of paint layers we're going to need. Unfortunately, it was a pretty rough prime job, so we had to go ahead and sand that down. The mirror itself has a little bit of thickness to it, not to mention that the frame may not sit 100% flush against the entire mirror. For this reason, it's important to paint the back of the frame, there's likely going to be spots where you can see the back in the reflection from the mirror. By painting it, it helps it blend in and become less visible. We used a fast dry paint, so in the interest of time, we each got a brush and we worked around in opposite directions. The back got two coats to ensure it was fully covered, and then after letting it dry for most of a day, we flipped it over and did the front, two coats on that as well. 
The first coat wasn't very thick though, so a third coat was clearly needed. It was at this time that I remembered that I wanted to recess the attachment screws. I should have done that before painting, so that the recess holes could be painted. Drilling these holes was actually much more complicated than I had anticipated. I needed to come in from the front, and I can't just go straight out the back, and the boards are also only 5 eighths of an inch thick. And to make things worse, I routed out a slot in the back and made it even thinner. In hindsight, I shouldn't have routed the sides. I mean, I needed to at the very corners, but not the entire length. So now, if I want to screw through here, I need to angle it like this. There really isn't that much wood holding things together now. Luckily, the frame basically holds itself up. These aren't going to be supporting much weight. It's also very important to pre-drill holes. This helps guide the screw through to the right spot, but also helps prevent splitting. The same goes for drilling out a recess space for the screw head. Here's a scrap piece where I was practicing drilling out some holes, and one of them I didn't drill out enough space for the recess, and yeah, it split pretty easily. After a few more practice holes, I got the idea of where I wanted things, and I actually found that this drill block guide worked wonderfully. It has slots to allow for a 45 degree angle. When coming in from the back, it actually places itself perfectly. I drilled out those holes with a small bit, and then went back with a 1 8 bit and a 1 quarter bit to countersink things. I opted to put two holes on each side, basically near the corners. After drilling those out, we put one last coat of paint on to ensure everything looked uniform, and I also went a little heavy over the screw holes to help cover those up and blend them in a bit. After one last fun journey of bringing the mirror upstairs, we got it in place. I then screwed it in using the pre-drilled holes, and voila, it's installed. As a final touch, I'll dab a bit more paint over these screws to hide them a bit more. I could have filled this in, sanded, and painted, but this turned out pretty clean, so I don't think it was worth it. And there we go, a nice simple upgrade to the look of the bathroom. And look, that gap between the mirror and the vanity top, it isn't even noticeable now. There's a few things I want to note or emphasize here about the process. One is make sure you can transport your frame from your assembly area to the final destination. If need be, you may need to do a few of the final steps closer to the destination. Like, I may have had to do the final gluing and painting upstairs. I checked beforehand and I was lucky, I was able to get it from the basement up to the second floor. It was pretty tight around a couple of corners though. The second tip is that I suggest painting after you glue it together. Some people like to paint things when it's all separate because it's easier to manage the small pieces, but painting after you glue will allow you to sand out any excess glue and cover it up. And the third tip is to do a lot of dry fits. Fit it in place before you glue, and fit it in place after you glue before painting. This was a pretty simple project, it's pretty cheap, and I think it does a pretty good job of bringing some extra life to the bathroom. That's all I've got for you today. Leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.